everybody. It's Ron and Hope Unfiltered. We are so glad that you're here today. I'm looking all casual. Didn't wash my hair. You missed some of the last ones, so they're probably worried to see you come back. Yeah, I'm back. They like they like it because you make but me I'm laugh. But I'm back with dirty hair. Yep, it is a little stinky. <laughs> It is a little stinky. <laughs> you told me this morning we're gonna talk about that marriage. I smelled good. That was your skin. Oh, okay. That was your skin. You had on some lotion that smelled good. Mm. Your hair's for a different topic in a different day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but people do need to know that as 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 women age, that hygiene <laughs> is not too much of a concern. Hygiene suffers. Yeah. You know when you they know, try, you... when they're trying to get you, it's you know it's like real clean. Once you've been locked down, it just slips. It's not true. It's more <laughs> like the older you get, you just don't care what people think. You're not have, feeling like you, you have to impress think? people. You don't want to impress me? I feel like you're already impressed. So why do I have to like shave my legs mm-hmm. every day or wash my hair every day? Well, you love me you, just they, like I am. They say what you do to get them, you got to do to keep them. They say that. That's what they say. I think there's some truth to that. Because we like what we fell in love with. Mm. Right? So anyway, so people are probably saying, what is this great big spot on his face? You can barely see it because it's under your nose. That's all I can see when I look. under your nose. (laughs) Well, anyway. He had a little piece of skin taken off. I had a place... When we were over there preaching in Italy, at our church in Italy, I had a little place come up. I know this sounds crazy being 55, but I struggled real bad with acne in my youth. And every once in a while, what, we get about two bumps a year. <laughs> we have those bumps we get come two up. Bumps it a like year. comes up like, where, how am I 55 and I still got this bump on my face? But anyway, and so it wasn't uncommon for me to have something like that, but this one never went away. Yeah. And uh, so we, so went, to the we went to the dermatologist, and it bothered her enough. She said, let's biopsy it. And I'm like, biopsy it like right now? And she wanted to do it right then and send it off to a lab. And it bled so bad, she had to, I didn't see it. I cauterize. just smelt it. She had to cauterize it. I just smelt my, my body burning. I couldn't look at it either. I just looked down. I felt my She started get cauterizing queasy. it, and she looked at me. She said, okay, it's going to be a big black spot on your face for a while. And I'm like... Well, that's great. I got a podcast. <laughs> and just a, she and was just like, a little oh, bit. it's fine. Just tell them you had something so, taken off so your face. So then they came up and tried to put a Band-Aid on it. Oh, that was hilarious. And it was on my mustache. So it was like this. It was waving. Yeah. So I'm like, when wind blows, it looked like it was waving at you. I'm like, you know what? We call it real, real raw and relevant. This is real raw and relevant. I had a little place biopsy today. By the way, on a serious note, agree with me that there's nothing to it. Anytime they want to cut on you and send it to a lab, Come on, I'm no, I'm no different than Freaks anybody else. Yeah. I got I got word in me. I know what the Bible says, but when a doctor looks at you and says we want to get this tested or whatever, mm-hmm. you know that immediate Fear. thing that the enemy yep. likes to rush through your body. And uh, so anyway, but I know I know my God. I know what the Bible says. We've already and, decreed uh, it. We've decreed declared it, declared it. it. But I need you to agree with me. So so seriously, agree with me. Uh, that uh, that this is totally and completely benign. There's nothing to it. And for whatever reason, it was just a bump that didn't want to go yeah. away. So that's what we're believing for. But anyway, you're just going to have to look at it. I know it does not look good. You know, I can't what, help it, it. You know what it looks like? What? Somebody <laughs> took a cigarette and burned That's what it felt like. You. That's what it you felt like. You shouldn't have felt it, Ron. No, I felt it. Remember when oh she said, do you feel gosh. it? And I said, I said keep going. But anyway, she, when you when you see smoke coming off your flesh, <laughs> yeah, I had that removing tattoos. That's never that's horrible. Never, that's never pleasant when you see smoke coming off your flesh. Horrible. And uh, I was fine till she got around some of the edges where it wasn't numb. I felt it then. Yeah. But other than that, I was all right, guys. I, th- suffice it to say, we're four minutes in. I don't want to talk about this place on my face. Just pray for me. I know it looks gross, but until this thing heals up, you're just going to have to look at it because putting a Band-Aid over a mustache is not, not an happening. option. And I've had a mustache since I was 16. So what, 39 years? We just can't break. We can't stop no, that right now. No. When you met me, I had the mustache. Yes. You since did. then, I've added some things, but I always had the mustache. Yeah. You shaved it off one time. And you told and me to immediately so grow it back. Weird. You told me to immediately grow it back. I think you wanted me to shave it. But after I shaved it, you're like, it you need to grow so that. It so weird. Because it makes your top lip look that long. <laughs> it's like your top lip comes down to your chin once you <laughs> oh, shave God. a mustache. 
So anyway, we got a good one today. We've talked about, you know, what makes a man. And I've told you guys that that I think we researched. I started looking on your YouTube page. And that is like uh, the number one. That and something else was like the top two uh, watched videos of yours of all time. In that whole series, people still, somebody emailed me, not emailed, but messaged me today looking for one of your sermons. And they said, um, they said, I found what makes a man on YouTube. They said, that was my favorite series that he did back in the day. So they're still talking about it. So today, I That's said, 2015, let's, I yeah, think. I said, let's talk about what makes a woman. I preached on, you I preached did. both of you them. You did a whole series. So if you want the whole series, go um, find it in, on well, YouTube. Well, I'm not talking about that series. Day. I yeah. don't even know all the points that I said. I guess those notes are somewhere in my files. I, I didn't go read those notes and say, let's talk about it today. I do have some things typed in my phone that I want to make sure that I cover. Now, first thing I want to say is we're not going to talk according to 2023 American culture. Right. Because femininity and masculinity is so screwed up. Yeah, it's messed up. It's messed up bad. We always want to and say had, what God says. I had to address this. You know, we, we have an East Coast, Greenville, uh, you know, the South pretty much holds tight to the traditions and the way they live. I think that's the best way For to say it. For the most part. For the most part, you know. Open to change, but they, they stay pretty much with, a, with a, a life they think is the blessed and best way to live. So I don't even know that I'd have to make these statements there. But, you know, we also pastor in the Bay Area of California, which is uh, they're, they're known for their free thinking. Mm -hmm. they, they celebrate their free thinking. In some ways, it's brought us iPhones and done some right. amazing things. In other ways, I think it's extremely detrimental because they move away from biblical values right. at times. <clears throat> and uh, in doing so, uh, just a few weeks ago, I talked about and God made them male and female, male and female. You just made threw that him. out there in yeah. one of your sermons. <laughs> and it wasn't a, a, a point. Yeah. It was I was reading through it. And we had about 10 to a dozen people got up from our West Coast campus and walked out yeah. at that moment. And then, Because you, you elaborated. <clears throat> you said, and there is only male and female. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you what kind of person I am. If I see you get up and do something to it, I would grind it harder. Yeah. So when I see somebody push back at it, I just bear down on it more. I don't, I don't, I don't give that up. The next week, I just referred to it because that's my that's the way I do things. Mm -hmm. I will refer to the previous points and then move on to my yeah. new stuff. And I had another five or six get up and walk out. So I finally last week I just stopped and I addressed. It. I said we need right. to know something. I said I want you to realize I understand where I am. I understand the characteristics, the cultural characteristics that define the San Francisco Bay Area of California. I said, I get it. I said, but also, I said, you got to understand something. I said, when you say you are a Christian, you are then saying, I take the values of the Bible to be the core values that guide and run my, my life. life. Yeah. And I said, 2023 idolatry is not carved images. 2023 idolatry is me taking this about Jesus I like, but leaving that mm -hmm. that I don't like, skipping this page in the Bible, but I like this yeah. page. And you form a Jesus that suits your lifestyle. Yeah. And that is idolatry. And the first command of God is you will have no other gods before me. And what what I was trying to let people understand is when it when everybody's welcome at my church. I don't care how straight, crooked, twisted, back, forth, loaded, homeless. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. You are welcome at my church. But when it comes time for preaching, I am preaching the word only, and we're not skipping pages. Yeah, we say what because God because we're says. not going to bend the word around culture. We're going to bend culture around the word. Yeah. And so I said all that to get to this thing called femininity. <clears throat> it is just as skewed as masculinity. Yeah, it because is. Because we've made the masculine feminine and we've made the feminine masculine. Now, before we get into what makes a woman, can I, can I say something? Of course. In the Bible, I think there's a spirit behind that. The spirit of Jezebel, the Jezebel spirit was a spirit that emasculated men. Mm. The first thing she did is she wouldn't let anyone around her, I'm just going to say this, have male testicles. She made everybody next to her that was male, she made them eunuchs. Yeah. So immediately it was taking the manhood away from men. So she so could be in charge. Whenever I see 
a movement that takes manhood and masculinity away from men. Yep. To me, that is a fruit it's of rooted. the spirit. It's rooted. What is that spirit? That spirit is a Jezebel spirit. And I think in America, we have lost the beauty yeah. of femininity. Femininity is beautiful. Why do we want masculine women? And why do we want feminine men? Let men be masculine. Let let women embrace the beauty of femininity. And so uh, without getting into political fodder, I want you to know I'm going to talk about the biblical feminine side of, according to God, what makes a woman. Yeah. Okay? So many times that confronts culture. It does. Do you want to do this in an interview or just want me to preach? Because you know, <laughs> I, know. I could go off here. I'm, I'm just sitting here listening to you. It's a, it is a, um, what is the word? It's a hot spot. You know, it's a hot spot in culture right now. I don't even right know now. why. I don't, I'm like, because it violates everything we believe. I'm like, how did we get here? It you violates know? everything we believe. <laughs> and we saw this Instagram post yesterday. Remember we about this girl who had gotten on an airplane, <clears throat> and she was about to be thrown off. And, and her name was a girl's name. And she registered. You know, when you buy tickets, you have to put male, female. And so the guy was went up to her. The stewardess went up to her and said, "Miss, how you doing today, Miss?" Well, this she, is actually all over Twitter. Yeah, and she went crazy, went nuts, because he didn't call her, didn't use the right pronoun. The right pronoun to her was she was identifying as a boy, and he was like, "You know, I." But she looked like a girl. Her name like, was a yeah. girl name. Yeah, and I'm. And and then the the onus is on the other person, right? We get in get trouble right. to, yeah, try to, to try to get figure right. out what's going on. And it, it's just it's something that's gotten way way out of hand. So let's go back to the Bible. Where did it all begin? First of all, God made man. God made a kind. Mm-hmm. God didn't start with maleness. God made a kind. Mm-hmm. And I skate on a little bit of theological thin ice because. When God made man, he made man in his image. And I've always said God needed nothing outside of him to create. God had all the creative faculties within himself. God created, God needed nothing outside of him to reproduce. God can reproduce life in any form. I mean, he did it with animals. He did it with sea creatures. He did it yeah. with mankind. God has the ability to create and produce life within himself. So God needed to join with nothing. Uh, to to create, and he made man in his image and then said it's not good that he's alone. He said that's the only part of him being like me that I that's don't like. That's not good. Mm-hmm. He said I don't like that. So people have got to understand, when God made man, he reached into the ground. That was the last time God reached into the ground. Mm-hmm. Everything else was inside of Adam. If you now want to know the role of a male and want to know the role of a female, what did Adam lose when he pulled Eve out of his side? The feminine aspect. Right. So now these things that make people fight, and we talk about this in a marriage conference, these things that make men and women go at it, basically are the things that complete you. Right. So in other words, when he pulled Eve Out of Adam, Eve now possesses what Adam is deficient in. Right. And Adam possesses what Eve is deficient in. Mm -hmm. So when you come together, let the two become one. One. I've always told people that's why sex is so powerful. God, God, I know everybody wants to say in 2023, it's just my body. It's just my body, honey. It is not just your body. The Bible makes it clear that there are ties in the soul and that when a man and a woman join together, there's the joining of spirits. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand the untangling of a spirit that has to go on when you do that. And not just, uh, it was just my body and it was just a one night stand. It's not. And I'm, I'm sorry that people have been lied to and then run up on all type of relational complications and don't know what's wrong. Right. A lot of it's tied to people they're still tied to. Yeah. So when you talk about a woman, you talk about that part that she pulled out of Adam that completes Adam. The first thing she did, I mean, God did, was he looked at Eve and said, here's Adam. So the woman woke up to a relationship. To a man. He woke up to Adam and said, here's a garden, tend it. A job. Man woke up to a job. (laughs) 
the first thing we need to look at women and understand what makes a woman is her desire for positive relationships. I can concur. Men, men can sit on the couch by themselves, drink beer and eat pretzels and watch football <laughs> games and belch by themselves. Gross. They can do it. <laughs> Women tend to want a friend. We want a friend to meet us at the mall. And, and, and the coffee the shop spa. and what it go to the spa. And 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 men tend. I don't say they don't need yeah. anybody, but men tend for the most to part function. most of the time. Yeah. yeah. And and if they don't have a lot of friends in their life, they tend to be all right with that. Give me a Saturday, give me some tools, let me go work on my car out in the garage. You know, let me I'm on I'm gonna sit here and watch the football game. But the desire to constantly relate to somebody, a lot of times to a man, that is work. Mm -hmm. That's true in our own life. Uh, there were there were couples that we would go out with over the thirty some years we've been together, and for you it was amazing. For me, it, it was, was awful. It was work. Yeah, it was work. And I would and I would look at you and say, "I'm doing this for you. I know you enjoy being with this lady, but me being with this guy is a is <laughs> it's a task. Just some work. It's a task, you know. So these next three hours, I'm doing this for you. And the fact is. Uh, as I have grown older, I've seen the need for positive relationships, but I think that plays out in most people's lives. Men need to understand that what makes a woman is her desire to be relational. Women want their marriage relationship to succeed. I think women don't understand that men do too. Men don't want to fail. Men don't like to fail. And so a lot of times I don't think men have the skill sets naturally, innately, to sustain relationships sometimes that women have. Right. Because so they I, need to listen to us women. So I think that that's since a part. Since we have that more I think than that they that's do. a part of the, of the makeup <laughs> of, of, of what makes a woman. Her desire and her natural instincts and For skill sets yeah. to be relational. That's one of the things. Another thing I want to talk about when it comes to a woman is the love language is usually different. Um, men, for the most part, are heavy into the love language of physical touch. I don't want to put a percentage on it, but no, all of them you can't. on some level, and I'd probably say past fifty percent. Mm -hmm. For the most part, uh, men desire physical touch. Men have to understand what makes a woman is that love can be spoken through many languages. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, women, and you ain't going to get physical touch. <laughs> and look, those other languages have been spoken. Yes. So that, that has to go with making up. Here's what makes a woman. Men want to make up with sex. Not women. Women want to make up and then sex. Maybe. B big difference. Maybe tomorrow. Big difference. We're going to make up first. Big difference. They want this thing handled. Why? They're connected to that problem. Right. It affects they, they, every, yeah, they, that problem can just bleeds into every area of our life. What makes a woman, men can compartmentalize yes. like crazy. I mean, men can box that thing off and set it over here and act like it doesn't even exist. Women generally are connected to everything. Everything. Kids, <laughs> everything. That's why men are always trying to get the lady off somewhere, trying to get them away from the kids. Literally, if we, I'm just being honest, trying to get them at a hotel, trying to get them at a resort, trying to get them out of town. Is that why you take me places? <laughs> you don't go straight. That's why I take you places. Right. To disconnect you from everything you're connected to because it makes you dial in more. Women have a very difficult time dialing in if they have everything around them connected to them. <laughs> Mainly kids. Y'all tickle me. What? Y'all will do whatever. <laughs> To get well, that we one don't thing. really have a choice. What? <laughs> we don't really have a choice. You don't? No. If the kids are in the next room, it ain't going to happen. No, probably won't. Okay. What's our choice? You know, if there's homework to be done, it ain't going to happen. If there's dinner to be cooked, it just ain't going to happen. If there's yard work to be done, if the something, if the leaf l roof leaks, I mean, it just, all those things, women are connected to those. I used that illustration in the marriage conference where, you know, I said the man and woman are in a time of intimacy. The man thinks he's doing such a good job, and the woman will look up. Did you cut the oven off? <laughs> and I mean, and he's like, "What? Do we have an oven?" Do we? Yeah, at, in, and at that moment, he don't care if the house burns down. Lord at that moment, have mercy. But the woman is connected to that oven, and uh, and so people wonder if we really live this. 
uh, if there's any time where I'm trying to take you in that direction, I put the house on lockdown. And then I will go around and tell you this door's locked. This door's locked. This is off. I turn it wide. I took the trash <laughs> out. I'm trying to disengage your mind from everything that pulls on it. What makes a woman? They're connected to environment. Yeah. Men couldn't give a flip about a candle. <laughs> Men couldn't care less about the scent of rose petals. Men couldn't care less. I mean, you give them a stairwell. But you do want clean hair. You give them a stairwell. It'd be nice if that okay. would happen every once in clean a while. Clean hair. Men, <clears throat> you know, you can look and say, are the kids asleep? And, you know, you've been in an intimate moment. And the guy's like, we got kids. I mean, he, you know, at that moment, he has taken that off. And he don't care if they're playing Monopoly on the roof. He don't care. Because he has the ability to compartmentalize. Men say, you know, we ain't paid our bills this month. What do you think? Let's go, let's, let's go have sex. And the woman's like, her nerves are shot. But the man has the ability, okay, I'm gonna box this up, close the door on it, mm -hmm. set it right here on this third shelf. I'll come back to it Tuesday. Women generally do not have that ability. There's gonna have to be some resolve in that issue for the woman to love and to love freely. We're talking about what makes a woman. Yeah. Do you want to ask me anything? Because I'm going to talk if you don't ask. I know you're going to talk. I think, I mean, we'll keep talking about these Now, things. these are generalities. Yes, they are. There may be somebody says, well, I'm not like that, but generally. But I think the majority of people, when you start talking about what makes a woman, what makes a godly woman, they go now, straight that's to... different. I know, but they go straight to Proverbs 31. But I don't, I don't, and we read that... And we think we are supposed to possess all of those things to be a godly woman. I don't think that's true. It's a high bar if it is it true. It is. I don't think there's one woman who Possesses can do all of it. every one of those things and do it well. Yeah, she would, I think those are goals yeah. for us. And uh, I think it's the word of God. I think it is the bar, the standard of God for a godly woman. But I, there's a difference between a godly woman and, and, a woman. and what makes a woman. What yeah. makes a woman a uh, woman. We can, we can do, you know, a godly woman, uh, if you want to, we can do one on that because then you get into modesty and appropriateness right. and a tender spirit and all these other things. Qualities, Gentleness and quietness yeah, qu forever. Qualities that she is supposed to possess. So a woman can speak many love languages. Um, yours is gift giving. You, you really, really love gift. You do like words of affirmation. I've noticed, uh, I've, I've told people lately, you're in a season where your star is really shining bright. And I've noticed that when I come and compliment you, it seems to be very meaningful to you. It does. You know, whereas that probably would not be your number one love gift. The fact that I recognize God right. has blessed the work of your hands seems, Affirming me. seems to move you <laughs> and, and seems to deeply touch you. Uh, acts of service, act, those things are all a part of it. And I think women want to be touched too. Oh, but they, they do. don't always want to be touched At sexually. At the right time. They don't always want to be touched sexually. No. <laughs> the touch on the cheek. The the. Uh, I sat last night on the couch. I played with your hair for a solid hour until you got so sleepy you couldn't hold your head up. Right. And you finally looked at me and said, I'm going to bed. <laughs> so I, I was, was playing so with sleepy. your hair, you know, and I thought maybe I'm moving this thing somewhere. And you're like, uh -uh, I'm going to bed. <laughs> but just, what was it? Non-sexual affection. And I think men need to understand this is how a woman is built and constructed. Uh, another thing, this is more heavy. Can we go heavy? Yeah. <clears throat> men are releasers. You know where I'm going. Men are releasers. Should we not go here? Sure. Go. Women are receptors. It's heavy. Yeah, but the the inclination, the the insinuations of that are very heavy. Women are receivers. Okay. I hope the Bible says we have been born of incorruptible seed of the living and enduring word of God. When I get saved, I am born of God's seed, mm. seed that has to mature. That's why Paul said, I labor till Christ be formed, formed in, like a baby. Yeah. I have received the seed of God. Mm -hmm. Now I have to go through the maturation process to where God completes and perfects this maturity in me. That's all through the Bible. It's a theme all through the New Testament. God commands us to do things only he can do. He commands us to forgive. He commands us to heal. Mm. He commands us 
you know, give sight to the blind, let the deaf hear. He he commands us to let the anointing destroy the yoke, remove yeah. the birth. He commands us to do things only a God can do. Mm. So in other words, God would not tell me to do something unless he knew it was in there. That's so good. Okay. It would be very unfair of God to command right. me something to do something do. I don't have the ability mm -hmm. to do. So the seed of it is in there if he's ever commanded me to do it. Here's the thing. <laughs> and our kids, you can tell. Whenever you received Ron Carpenter's seed, everything Ron Carpenter is, <laughs> everything Ron Carpenter can do, and all of Ron Carpenter's potential, not positive and negative, is in his seed. Mm -hmm. God put his seed in us because in his seed is all his potential. When a woman has intercourse with a man and she receives that man, that's why she's got to get out of her mind, this is just my body. Right. Because when a man is a releaser, he releases to the woman seed. What is it? Everything good about him, potential. Everything bad about him, mm -hmm. everything every every generational curse, every generational blessing, everything about that uh, man is in his seed. Mm -hmm. I cannot produce what I am not. Right. I can only produce what I am. And if you look at our kids, you can see Carpenter all over them. And if you watch the way they act, you can see Carpenter all in them because that's all I got. Okay. And here's the thing I don't think women realize. When you receive that into yourself, there needs to be some type of spiritual experience that you may want to speak to where you free yourself of those experiences. Because everybody, when they find the one, probably has some other experiences that they wish would have never been a right. part of their journey. Right. And they don't think that that affects them. Well, that's in the past. True. It is, and it don't need to be relived. But it has attachments. And it has residue. Why? Because men have the ability a little more by being a releaser to get up and mm -hmm. walk away from the experience. When Women are now, after they're receivers, they're incubators. Mm. So they tend to incubate the experience, mourn over the experience, have joy over the experience, when a man tends to be able to more yeah. walk away from the yeah. experience. So... What 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 would you say? I know this is kind of going here, but here it's real raw and relevant. What would you say to the woman who said, you know what, I think I found the one, but you know, I've had three or four mm -hmm. other experiences yeah. and I want to make sure this doesn't affect me going forward because what Pastor has said has just freaked me out. Well, me and Pastor Denise Boggs did a whole podcast and you can go back and search it um, on Soul Ties. And what they are, we described what they are, what they mean, how you get them and how to break free from them. And in, in the case that we're talking about now, a woman being a receptor, Receiver. Uh -huh. uh, we receive. And then, you know, you hear so many people talk about, well, that woman's crazy or she's got multiple personalities or, you know, a woman starts acting like or taking on the traits of the person she's with. Let me interject something. That in the secular world is the biggest claim young guys make toward young women that I've ever seen. Yeah. And she's cray cray. Yeah. She's crazy. Man, these girls are crazy. These girls are psych I hear psycho. Yeah. I don't think any of them have mental illness. But I think sometimes, do you remember what happened that time in, in the early 90s that, that woman came in and, and wigged I out do. on me? In okay. counseling. So I, I didn't have counselors, and I wasn't trained to be a counselor. I probably had no business doing it. I knew a little bit about the Bible, and if I couldn't help you with the Bible, I really couldn't help you. But uh, there, was this, there was this person, I think it was like after a Wednesday night service, just really, really tormented by some things, and came into the office after the service, and I mean just started, I don't, I don't know what you call it, wigging out, freaking out, whatever. I didn't know if it was a demon. I didn't know what it was. But I knew something something negative and supernatural was happening right in front of me, and I had limited understanding. And the Spirit of God bailed me out in that moment. He said, those are the personalities of everybody she slept with manifesting. And I immediately you said began it. to break the mm -hmm. power. I spoke it out of my mouth, and I began to release the anointing that destroys the yokes and began to remove the burden. And it wasn't probably 60 seconds into the experience 
the peace of God began to come over her and God did something supernaturally right. in her life. But it may not be that serious with everybody. I think this woman had had an extremely promiscuous, mm -hmm. uh, if I remember right, maybe even prostitution. Yeah. I mean, she was had a life deep right. in that stuff. But those experiences for the woman, more so than the man, can have residue. Yeah. Well, those are live <laughs> beings, live cells, live DNA, live genetics that are being released into another person's yeah. body that is alive, that doesn't die. It, you know, it takes a while for that to die off, but it gets into your own cells mm -hmm. and into your own body. Right. And so then multiple partners, multiple times, yes. It can affect it you. It does It affect can affect you. your soul and it can affect your spirit. And a soul tie is basically, in a, in a synopsis, is something that has been created through some type of a bond. Un, unholy union. It's a mm -hmm. bond that's been created and by some type of union. And it doesn't have to be sex. It doesn't have to be sex. Mm -mm. It's most commonly referred it's to as It's an emotional tie. It's the emotional tie created Soul, to somebody your emotions. where you cannot make decisions independently of this tie. Right. It bonds you. That's where it is. So to get rid of it, you have to recognize it. You have to renounce it. And then you have to free yourself. You have to break yourself from every tie to that person, whether it's music, whether it's gifts, whether it's clothing, whether it's memories, you just, you know, restaurant, whatever. You just have to rid yourself of those things and plead the blood of Jesus over it. And that's, when you apply the blood, yes, it'll break it. It does it'll break, break it. it. And um, last thing, we got so much here. One of the last things I want to talk about is something that I pinned down is, God put women on a cycle. Every man listening to this is like, well, duh. But I don't think they know the implications of that. Well, let's just say, too, for the record, a man, what well, makes a man? A man can't have a period. Uh -uh. A man is not on a cycle. No. Okay. He doesn't have ovaries. No. Nope. A man is or pretty consistently ruled by his testosterone levels. Now, I'm getting away from the Spirit. I believe he's, he's led by the Spirit. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about the way he is built chemically, biologically, that he has testosterone levels that he responds to and that drive him. Women are much different in the fact that they are cyclical circles. Mm -hmm. there's, there's something, and it affects moods. Ron, you're going to go to moods. <laughs> It affects moods. Ronald. There, there are some points in the cycle where sex is much more attractive than at other times in the cycle. There's sometimes in the cycle you feel much more energetic, where in sometimes the cycle you feel absolutely depleted. There's sometimes you feel joyful. There's sometimes you feel irritable because people are on a cycle. Some cycles affect them more deeply than it does other women. Some of them have what they call mild periods. Some women have what they call awful periods. But the fact is, I don't know that men understand. We call it speaking multiple languages, and we kid about it, but really it's nothing about the woman's language being on a cycle. Yeah, She speaks differently depending on where mm -hmm. she is. I think that's that so cool, though, how God made that. That I mean, it's proven that women desire sex during the time, the four to five days that they're ovulating. Right. Why? You desire it because God created God that created time that way. Yep. for you to procreate, to have a baby. Yep. So cool to me I how tend, God I made that. I just tend to ovulate a lot more often than Do you. Do you ovulate a lot yes, more often? Yes, I do. My uh, God, yes. here we go. Don't say that yeah. in this day and time. <laughs> you do not ovulate. You have more testosterone <laughs> flow. Would it be something if somebody just caught that little snippet of it? Somebody will take that part out and throw it all yes, over here. Yes, please don't. Even Ron, Ron does Carpenter not believe, ovulate. Yeah. Oh. And nor does he believe another man can. I've, and walked, so, I've, walked, I've walked around the house floor and I've come and hugged you and you're like trying to cook. You say, what are you doing? I'm, I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> you have. You're ridiculous. You are ridiculous. But the implications of that are what we call multilingual. It's not that they're multilingual. <laughs> it's that they're in a different place. And those chemicals are real. Mm -hmm. And they're moving. And they're changing. And that's why and we didn't ask for any of know, this. That's why the the Bible commands the man to dwell what? 
with her dwell with her with knowledge. with knowledge at no point does the bible ever command the woman to dwell with the man with knowledge why because the man is simplistic in the way he's biologically made <laughs> there's not much to there's know not. Is he's, he's either kind of on or off you that's feed just about him? it but the fact is the, he says dwell with and her you with love knowledge him. so god has put god has put the responsibility on me to understand that that's hard i don't always get it right it don't mean that sometimes it ain't frustrating but the fact is, it is my responsibility, and as a man, you have to embrace that, not as a frustration, but as a delicacy. We're just fearfully and wonderfully made. It's a delicacy of the woman. You are. The Bible says that— But you are, too. The Bible says that, you know, when he got to—the word for Eve is different. Basically, it says he formed, formed Adam, which means basically like dealing with clay. But it says he fashioned Fashion. Eve, which means he took his time. And so we ain't even got to the We're physical traits that are different. But here are some of the things that men understand. These are the dynamics of femininity. And they're beautiful dynamics that nobody should be ashamed from and nobody should want to rid themselves of. Let's, I think, let's don't stop, though. <laughs> let's don't stop, though, until we—let's end on this one. I think it's so beautiful how—what uh, makes a woman. Because we were taken from man, we were designed to be his helper, his helpmate. So many people don't embrace that. Women want to be in charge. They want to That leave. goes back to that spirit. Jezebel spirit. Now, let me tell you something. Oh, we're just going to get in all kind of trouble today. Go ahead and, go ahead and text me. I don't care. Who are you going to Put tell? a comment on there. Go tell them. Subscribe, this. like, and put a comment. I don't care. But listen, after there was nothing said till after sin, Adam and Eve were fine. But when God came and started handing out the way the things are going to be now, that sin is in other words, the curses. Yeah. He said, and her desire will be for you. That word there means basically your place. His, her desire is going to be for his place. Yeah. What are we seeing Headship. play out? Headship. Okay. What did you tell some woman a while back? I keep referring to this. I don't know who you were talking to, and you certainly don't need to name name. But it was somebody talking, you know, do I believe women need to be whole and be strong? Absolutely. And, and, and have value and bring something to the relationship? Absolutely. Yes. Reach your potential. Every Go woman for has it. a call, a gift and on absolutely. her life. Absolutely. Hope's got God. stuff she can do that I can't do, and I want to see her fly. I mean, just period. So don't misrepresent what but I'm saying. But in a marriage relationship is what we were talking about. I said, you know, they were like, ain't no man going home. I don't just yeah, they need had no that man. Attitude. They, like, yeah. I don't need no man to I'm take care of me. I'm good all by myself. I I'm make good. my own yeah. money. I'm good. And I'm like, well, I am too. But you know what? I want to be taken care of. I want my man to be stronger than me. I want him to make more money than me. I want him to buy me things. And in that moment, they were silent. care of me. I said, because I, that confronts yeah. the issue of the day. I hope you do make more money than me. I hope you sell more books and can we can do everything. But it, but that's not that's not the way we work because it ain't really your money or my money. It's our money. Right. We're one. But the thing is, I there is that call upon the woman to be a support. Yeah. And I heard Miles Monroe, my mentor, say one time. You know, he's talking about the old Beatles song. All you need is love. He said. For a woman, that's true. He said. For a man, that is mm -mm. not true. No. Nope. He said a man needs respect. respect. A man has to be loved and a man has to be respected. The word helpmate that God pronounced over the woman is the same word Jesus Jesus gave to the Holy Spirit. Helper. He will be your helper, your helpmate. So I've always told people when a man hollers, there's two people that need to come running. That's the Holy Spirit and his wife. So what is the Holy Spirit? He's, he's a, a help, comforter. He's a comforter. He's, he's a, a comforter. He is a nurturer. You know, and that's what we're supposed to I've be. I've always told that's you. That's the gentler one of the group. You're my sedative. Yeah. Um, I tend to be a type A personality, but there's one woman who can calm that. And you know she is. A woman, I believe a woman should, and that's another part of her feminine side. Yes. He, he don't want to be challenged in that moment. He wants to be comforted in yeah. that moment. And so these are these are great things. We threw out about five good ones right here. And we here. could keep going, but we don't have enough time. <laughs> so this has been 
Ron and Hope Unfiltered, real, raw, relevant. Why don't you go follow us? Don't if you subscribe, don't, yeah, subscribe, if you don't subscribe. follow and subscribe, do so right now. We've got it right here on the screen if you're watching. If not, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, TikTok, all of the things. Um, also, I have an inner circle. If you're listening and you would love mentorship, listen, and you also get my my free Book. It is a deep study guide to the book I wrote in 2021, The Most Beautiful Disaster. I just wrote a brand new study guide. So you get that for free and you get the first 30 days for free uh, just for for wanting to try the inner circle. It is a community of men and women who want mentorship, who want accountability. Uh, we've got so many things we offer you. We've got Ron's vault. It's got all of his messages that he's preached his whole life. Remastered. That's unbelievable, honestly. Yeah, so go to roncarpenter.com yeah. to get that. Go to Hope's Inner Circle to join the Inner Circle. Have wonderful guests. We just had Real Talk Kim. We got Christine Kane coming in February. We got Darius Daniels coming. And I got a brand new book coming out. You do. Tell them. February the 23rd. It comes out. If you don't fight, you don't then win. you don't win. So we got a lot of resources that we want to offer you. Thanks for being with us today. Until next time, it's Ron and Hope Unfiltered. See you later.